Hi everyone, uh, I'm Senji Lakshmi, a PhD student from Indian Institute of Science, Bangalore. Uh, thank you so much, first of all, for uh, joining this session, uh, for signing up for this PMRF uh, TA session. This is just going to be a very quick orientation kind of a session, just more like a personal introduction to myself as well as to the course. I'll just share my screen and maybe get started. Uh, yes. So here we go. I will also minimize my screen so that uh, yes, here we go. Yeah. Hi everyone. Uh, yes, again, my name is Senji. I'm a PMRF scholar at Indian Institute of Science, Bangalore. Uh, this is going to be more like an interactive session where uh, we can discuss and learn together more about uh, this course, Environmental Biotechnology. This is an NPTEL course that you guys have signed up for. There is a discussion forum. You guys can ask questions there. You can ask the same questions here to me as well. We can talk about it, try solving some of the concepts uh, together, try understanding some of the ideas better. You can also always um, uh, write to me. I can drop my mail ID. Uh, I am from Indian Institute of Science, like I mentioned. I work in Evolutionary Venomics Lab. I work on snake venoms. Our lab actually works on uh, venoms of multiple organisms, including snakes, scorpions, and centipedes. We are trying to understand how venoms vary uh, and what are all the factors that actually cause them to change uh, and mainly my PhD drives understanding how uh, prey predator interaction works and we are also trying to develop better antivenoms to treat snake bites. So maybe in one of the sessions if we have some time and if we are discussing about ecosystems and the roles different animals play in the ecosystem I could tell a little bit more about my research and of course if you guys are interested you can always ask me questions. Uh, but I also have a qualification in uh, industrial biotechnology. Um, I have completed my uh, bachelor's from Anna University, uh, BTEC. Uh, in this course, it was more about uh, uh, trying to integrate the principles of biology, technology with uh, industrial applications. So what do you think uh, this course is going to be all about? Okay, maybe I'll just start with it. Uh, environment uh, comes from a French word which means um, um, environ or to encircle. Um, it encompasses everything in our surrounding. Let me just quickly check if the recording is going fine. Yes, I think it's fine. Let's just go back. Yeah. Uh, yes, it means everything that belongs to our surroundings. It includes you, me, everything that's there from microbes to bigger animals to plants and even abiotic components like uh, soil and light and so on. So it not just includes all of these components but it also includes the interactions that these components have with each other. And biotechnology like I mentioned is a technology that exploits these biological organisms or the components that are there uh, in the living system for the benefit of the mankind. That is where bio and technology comes together. So biotechnology has several domains or several fields uh, and tries to solve problems in each of these fields including uh, uh, food products, uh, medicines that is development of better drug therapeutics, uh, uh, genetic engineering, genetic technology, um, agricultural sciences and each of these also overlap with each other. There are a lot of overlaps and also environmental biotechnology and this majorly deals with solving the problems associated with the environment including decontamination of the environmental components like water, air, soil, production of biosensors and various chemicals for treatment of uh, some of these environmental components, uh, pollution prevention based minimization as well as uh, waste management. But 
what do you think are the major problems uh, that we're currently having in, in our environment or in, in the world we live in? It includes climate change. Everyone's talking about climate change, how temperature is rising, how the polar caps are melting, uh, how the sea levels are rising and so on. There are also a lot of emerging new diseases. We just saw COVID pandemic. We recently, uh, you know, uh, are seeing uh, in the news that monkeypox is becoming a global emergency. So many new diseases are coming in the recent past. And we also see um, uh, that our energy demands are increasing. There are no fossil fuels. Go countries going bankrupt because of uh, the increasing fossil fuel prices and so on. So how can we exploit biological material, biological resources and biotechnology to solve some of these problems globally? The goal is to achieve a zero waste community um, and for thriving as a good zero waste community, there are a lot of things that we can do as an individual, but there are also a lot of things that are at an industrial scale that needs more attention, including wastewater management or efficient recycling processes. But when we talk about recycling or reusing or even waste management, it starts at a very basic level of waste segregation. It starts even at, 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 you know, at your home scale, dividing between biodegradable and non-biodegradable waste. Biodegradable waste or anything that could be plant products or products that can be easily converted into non-harmful and compostable material but compostable and biodegradable again could be two different things compostable material become one and the same with the soil they enrich the soil's property they become manure these are mostly plant products that go back into the soil and can be converted uh, into nutrients but there are also other biodegradable pollutants, which I'll be talking in, in the very immediate slide. But non-biodegradable waste or plastics and glass and something that can't be converted uh, into a non-harmful product so easily. Especially plastic. We know recently that India banned single-use products, uh, plastics like straws and polythene bags and so on. Uh, but we do use a lot of plastic in a lot of places. Packaging and so on still has a lot of plastic in it. And this is often soiled with other products like food products and so on. And thus recycling them also becomes a challenge. And especially waste from domestic, which is gets filled in the landfill like this it's just absolutely impossible to segregate and even recycle or reuse them so they just end up being there for several thousands and millions of years so what are biodegradable pollutants that are not just from plant source but are also other products that can be converted into non assorted Azotus products by either treating with certain chemicals or even by the action of microorganisms. You all might have read in the news about plastic eating bacteria and so on, which is all what this course will also be mainly talking about. These microorganisms don't just break down them into non azotus products, but they also convert them um, into substances as uh, uh you know something that can be used um, for production of uh, alternate sources of energy as well like biofuel let's maybe you know take a step back and and understand how much of this non biodegradable products is a problem Biodegradable products, we saw that we can use microbes or something um, and even utilize them. But what happens to non-biodegradable stuff? What kind of a magnitude of problem do they cause? One major problem that is there even in India is the arsenic pollution. There are several sources of arsenic. It comes from 
natural sources like volcanic eruptions uh, and also several anthropogenic anthropogenic sources and even the natural sources which you are usually balanced like the eruptions and the cycling of the arsenic is usually balanced but uh, due to very unnatural and very frequent forest fires and so on because of human activity this natural balance is disrupted and hence more arsenic than what could be actually contained uh, mixes with our water resources comes to the soil contaminates our food um, uh, humans consume these products animals consume these products and they just start affecting the whole ecosystem as such and one important thing that i want to mention is i've also provided um references for all of um these uh, papers or uh, review articles that i'm talking about so you can always go back and read more information about the things that i'm discussing here you can also come back and ask me questions you can ask me here in the next class or you can post it on youtube these videos will be always available on youtube so you can always comment it on youtube yes arsenic pollution coming back to that these are some of the regions that have been affected by arsenic pollution and the bigger the red color circle is it means the more affected the particular region is and as you can see india and several parts along this uh, this latitude are very heavily affected and this is regions that are affected in india and again you see most of the gangetic valley is what is affected severely by arsenic contamination in the groundwater and you know that ganges flows through several of our plains and that is what forms um, uh, you know that gives life to many of our plains here and that is heavily polluted with arsenic this is an overlay with the different biogeographic zones and you see that the coastal alluvial soil um, and the alluvial upland is what is usually contaminated with a lot of arsenic in the underground water. So what are all the mitigation strategies for such um, really such problems of high magnitude? Reducing the release of harmful untreated chemicals by effective waste management that's one solution reducing emission of greenhouse gases decreasing the depletion of fossil fuels at this rate and maybe look for alternative energy sources maybe you guys can also think and tell me what are all the other possible options that there are for mitigation have you guys heard about superbug we will read a little bit more about superbugs in our future slides this is just an overview i'm just going to go about i'm just going to sprinkle these ideas these problems the solutions and so on so that you get an idea about how this course is going to be and we will get into more details uh, in the coming classes what are superbugs any idea what they could be this this is a very beautiful depiction uh, that i got from the internet for the superbug Superbugs are bacterial strains that were developed by Professor Anand Mohan Chakrabarti. These bacteria are known as oil-eating bacteria and they can digest oil from oil spills in ocean. Oil spills in ocean has become a major problem. Even recently, a really big ship got stuck in the ocean for a really long time and that means oil spillage because vehicles, if the ships and all that they carry a lot of oil and if there is some damage to the vessel or if there is um, any accident that happens oil spillage is a very major problem and this oil just stays there because it's immiscible it prevents light from entering it it depletes oxygen content and causes a lot of other problems for the aquatic life that is there uh, in the oceans so professor developed a strain of a bacteria by genetic engineering uh, that would efficiently clean up or digest this oil products uh, to give some byproducts that are not harmful so this is also an example of biodegradable pollutions this oil can be degraded by bacteria 
so what are those bacteria how did he identify it how do we go about identifying it is something that we will also read in in this course so overall um, environmental biotechnology as you would know now focuses mainly on waste management pollution control energy crisis mitigation and sustainability as a whole these are the goals of environmental biotechnology and biodegradable pollutants are a focus or a point of interest because we want to look at more microbial um, uh, substances that can actually clean up these biodegradable pollution pollutants into non-harmful products uh, persistent organic pollutants such as chloro uh, fluorocarbon chc um, arsenic chromium these are very toxic and fatal to life uh, they are the major class of pollutants those also need some kind of treatment and and even that is also a focus of environmental biotechnology about how we go about reducing or removing them from the environment microbes like superbugs are the most researched uh, microbes they are the ones uh, that scientists are continuously looking at to use them for degrade pollutants through uh, reduction or oxidation reactions which also is something we will read more in our coming sessions into products that are something that is valuable for pollution control we want to exploit them use them for the benefit of the mankind so these are some of the things very broadly that we will cover in this course we will do a lot of interaction uh, we will also try to discuss some of these problems in detail exchange ideas and so on in this course i really hope you find this course helpful thank you so much